Hi there, my name is David Morse. I'm the CEO and team leader of Keller Williams Arizona Realty in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm so thankful that you've stumbled upon our video. This series is for you, the realtor who may be uh, going through the first downshifting market in your career, and certainly, even if you've gone through one before, this there's never been quite one just like this. And so, your real estate blueprint for the market of the moment explores eight strategies with some of the top real estate professionals in the industry today on how you can not only survive right now, but thrive. How do you make sure that your business goes up and doesn't flatline or go down? Um, learn from these professionals. And if you're in the Scottsdale or Greater Phoenix Metro, please reach out, comment, shoot us an email, a phone call. I would love nothing more than to serve you and your business by helping you understand how you can hit and exceed your goals. Let's watch what these amazing professionals have and play it all in. It is 10.30, which means we are going to start with our next tactic here lead generation i'm so excited to have cody riddle uh with us cody um for those who do not know you let me just uh let me just give you a brief intro all right so cody got into real estate in 1999 21 years as a residential realtor um as soon as she could she got her broker's license three years later in 2002 and broke one million dollars in gross commission income by following the MREA, for those who don't know what that is, millionaire real estate agent with a high profit margin. She owns and operates Riddle Realty Group uh, from 2016 until June of 2019 when she then joined Keller Williams Arizona Realty. I'm so excited to have her. She's on my uh, associate leadership council and she brings so much value to everyone. So Cody, I'm just going to let you jump in, talk to us about lead generation in the market of the moment. And uh, I'll be right here uh, when you finish up. All right. Okay, thank you so much. That was so nice of you. And wow, um, thank you to Joe, Andrew, and Beth for some great information. I have tons of notes already. Um, some good stuff. And David and our leadership at the Market Center, thank you for putting this on uh, for all of us. Um, okay, you guys, I do have some slides I'm going to share. So hopefully I can share my screen with no problem. And here we go. Okay, David, is that good? Can people see that? Yes, because, we can. Okay, good stuff. So we're going to talk about lead gen. Uh, here we go. Um, uh oh. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is my 20 minute outline. What is lead generation? What qualifies me to talk about lead generation? Uh, what you should not do in today's market, which is almost as important as what you should do in today's market. Um, for the sake of this meeting and, and for this 20 minutes, I want to, when we talk about lead generation, that we're talking about two, two things to define it. Um, of course, we want to find motivated buyers and sellers looking to do a transaction today. No question about that. And but we're also looking to win win over mind share of our people and of the public in order to gain market share down the road. And that's super important right now because people are scared. People are nervous. People are nervous about their money and, and what's going to happen to their investments. So you got to be really the voice of reason and calm so that you can gain that mind share to increase your business at a later time. Um, David, you were so great and you said some, some great things about me. And, and I'm, I'm telling you uh, this, and this slide is in here for a very important purpose. And that is there are, there's a lot of noise out there right now, you guys. There are people teaching every which way on how to survive through a pandemic, which is so interesting to me because we're in this thing like three weeks. So how do they really know? Um, but I think the point is, is be very, very careful who you're listening to. Make sure these people have the success. Uh, this came straight from Gary Keller back at Mega Camp just last year. 
he had anybody that presented, he looked at their, their P&Ls before they could even get on that stage and speak to us. And that's something that's super important for your leadership. This is why, I'm not gonna go through these points, but it's important that, that you guys know what I can do so that, and what I have done so that you can actually take it and say, is this valuable information? And is this person practicing what they preach, right? Are they truly um, a leader in the industry and, and are they doing what they say and teaching and are teaching you to do? So big stuff. Um, okay, so what not to do. Uh, this part is huge and, and it's kind of somewhat humbling uh, for me, but the, the things that I did in 2008 and 10 were the worst things you could have done possible. Uh, Andrew said, you know, what he learned in the last one. Well, I, I wasn't good in the last one. I ignored the reality of the situation. I thought that, eh, this is just a, a couple weeks, maybe a month. <laughs> and, and I was arrogant in my ability to convert business. I just knew I would always be able to convert business and always be able to um, take that uh, next person and turn them into a client. And I didn't the the fourth the third ray is i didn't change my lifestyle i didn't stop spending money i didn't change going out to restaurants i didn't change traveling i didn't change anything um in other words i didn't cut expenses i just kept things rolling and the last thing and, and the most important thing is i just sat back and waited for the phone to ring um you guys can't you just can't do this i had my head in the sand last time and just figured I had already been in the business forever. I think it was like, oh my gosh, I've been in the business for 12 years at that, by that point. And I was very successful going into that. And I, I just think that it's so important that you realize that you cannot do these things moving in this market this time around. Let me tell you, I'm so far ahead. It was the first week that this started that I jumped into what I had, what I learned last time and what I won't do this time. So please, please, I'm going to beg you, don't think this thing is going to be over in, in a week or in a month or in two months. Treat it like it's going to be a long-term thing and, and really get a hold of, of these things that we're talking about today. So um, big and important, and I hope you can hear it in my voice, how hard and difficult that was to come out of it for me last time. It was like building, I made it, but I made it by the skin of my teeth. And, and it was only because I had had a lot of people that still like know, liked, knew, and trusted me in this market that I survived. But it, it was not, I did not thrive when we came out of that. I had to build and build and build from ground zero again. And it was super, super hard. I will not let that happen this time. And I don't want you guys to either. Okay, so what to do to create business. Um, I think it's really important that, that we understand, yes, it's a sensitive time, but you guys, we are in the service industry. We're here to help people. And while people may not want to hear a realtor right now during a pandemic, we're still very important. Um, the whole deemed essential, like it's, it was joked about and there were some funny memes about it but, and sayings about it, but, but the fact remains that we are essential. There's a reason that, that they need us. People still need to buy and sell homes. And this conversation is relevant right now. So if you can get your head around that piece, that mindset piece, you will win. And, and, the, and the reason is because these conversations are, they're not particularly easy to make them about real estate, but they are easy to make them about love and caring and honoring people in the situation that they're in today. And, and that may be that they need to buy or sell a home in this crazy environment. So we need to be sympathetic to that. And not sympathetic to the fact they have to buy or sell a home, but sympathetic to the fact that we all need to stay safe and still do it. So when you're making those calls, make no mistake, they are still sales calls. They are still calls to, to find and reach people with, with that love and kindness and coming from contribution like KW always tells us to do. But, but 
what I what I'm finding is people are really like kind of criticizing a sales call and, and it's just not necessary. Take pride in it that you're here, you're in a service industry and you, you are absolutely needed. So please, please know and, and remember that. Um, okay, this last one. And these are all things that in three weeks my team has already done. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through each one of these. Um, no question, you are gonna check in with your SOI. Now my SOI is huge. I have a massive database of SOI. So it takes us a long time to get through that. And as we're making our calls, like I have our assistant Linda making those calls right now to my personal SOI, Bill and I. And those people are hanging up the call with Linda and then reaching out to me right after sending me text messages, calling me, saying how much they appreciated that one phone call from Linda. Um, I've been called a class act and uh, what, what an amazing thing to do at a time like this. Um, you guys, I never got those calls before when they were just straight up sales calls. These were care calls and caring for these these folks and couldn't come from a better person on our team that just has such a positive outlook on everything and loves people very easily. Uh, make no mistake, that's what people need right now. So do it um, and, and watch what happens as a result. It's, it's, it's been really, really awesome. Um, okay, the second thing we did, we did a one day food drive. We made 527 dials. It was just three of us on the team that decided to do this in one day, and it was all in our area of Cave Creek. And we just did a one-day food drive. We call everybody we called. We introduced ourselves as, as a realtor and then just simply talked about helping the, the Foothills Food Bank. And of those 527 calls, we talked to 42 families. And, and it, was, it was an amazing day and the contribution uh, was, it was a great place to come from and still put ourselves in front of folks for that mind share that I talked about earlier. So big stuff. Um, and then I also put my kids to work in going and collecting the food that the folks put on their front patio and my kids collected it within a two hour time frame. So I got to get them out of the house and do something uh, for, for the greater good. So that was really good too. Um, B2B, business to business. Create and nurture the influencers in your community. Such a big deal. I spent a, a whole day calling in Cave Creek, calling business owners in Cave Creek. Um, make no mistake, I had to make, um, many, many, many dials to, to get folks on the phone. And I had a lot of um, conversations that just went over just beautifully. Um, it was about their business. How are they doing and how I could serve them and help them. And inevitably that conversation came back to me and how they could help me um, and, and my business. So now out of that, I'm creating a mastermind group and, and I already have uh, emails coming back to me from those people. I sent a handwritten letter to all of the people that I had great conversations with out of that day. Um, really good. And these are people that talk to multiple people in our community on a daily basis. So you couldn't be in a better place being in a group full of influencers in your community. So it was a big one. Virtual open houses. Yes, we're doing that. What the Facebook Live um, that Beth talked about, that's what we're using for virtual open houses. And we're driving the business to it through the same channels that we always advertised our open houses with. We just put the, we do the link, a link for the virtual open house, and then we do a live Facebook open house. So that way the people can come in two different ways. Um, and it's, it is um, a piece that I don't think is hugely um, accepted yet by the public. I don't think it's something that people are going, oh yeah, virtual open house, I know exactly what that is. It isn't. But the more all of us do it, and, and the greater we do it in numbers, the more it will become the norm, and the public will accept it and embrace it and want to do it this way. Why? Because we're driving it to be that way. And that's the way we're going to do business right now. So I urge all of you, do virtual open houses. Let's get this thing rolling. Um, videos. 
I think videos are a monster way for lead gen right now. We are doing a contest. We just started it last week to do a Facebook live video one time per day. Everybody on the team throwing out good, massive content, keeping yourself in front of this and being the voice of calm for the people listening. Trust me, they start off really slow. You get one or two views while you're on there live and then that builds and gradually builds to more and more people, more and more comments, but nothing comes, comes easy, you guys. It, it takes work and it takes effort to get those things rolling and to begin. Um, but I'm urging you, pick one. Pick something, get started, and get rolling on it. Um, postcard messaging. So postcards are expensive, so you maybe shouldn't do it if you're just starting out. Believe, I'm not telling you or encouraging you to do it if you are just starting out. But your messaging could be the Keller offers. What, what an amazing thing right now. Um, I don't know if all of you know, but Zillow and uh, Open Door, they've stopped. I had clients literally in the position, they had an offer from uh, Open Door, and Open Door pulled that offer, and now those two homes are listed with me. And, and I could offer them the Keller offers at first. They, they ended, it ended up not working for them, and now I'm listed uh, as a full-blown listing um, on MLS. Both of them are coming on the market this week. So every single one of these things have been put into place from our team in the short three weeks that we've been uh, really under this uh, pandemic issue. And so when they say spring into action, they're not joking. Um, I felt every day I was working harder now than ever before. So important, um, hopefully. And if you guys have any questions, please, please let me know. Um, write them and ask away. Um, because here's the deal. We got to be honest. Uh, everything I'm telling you to do today and in this video is the only way we'll know for sure if it worked is by doing it, taking action, and then looking at what happens three months, four months, 90, uh, six months, or a year from now, right? That, that's really when we're going to know if what we did today is, is working. Um, and it's really important that you put those tools, test tools, and keep what is working, keep it going in a disciplined fashion. Um, super, super important because it is true that people still need to buy and sell and that number is never going to be zero, right? We know that. So get out and get, get your business. Find the motivated through those ways I was sharing you and anything else you can come up with for your now business. But you got to get on the phones and make those calls to various different people. Build your database right now and create and earn that mind share so that you can get future and, and have a successful business with better and increased market share. So you guys, hopefully that, that works. I think I'm right about, uh, about three minutes left and would love to uh, answer any questions if you guys have any. Yeah, let's open it up for questions. Drop them in the chat box for you. One question came in, how has turnout been to virtual open houses for you thus far? Yeah, super slow. That's exactly what I was saying, you guys. It's slow, and it's not something the public even really knows about. We haven't done those much. Um, so it's something you, we all need to do and get the word out. Virtual open houses, it's a new buzzword. Use it, get it out there, and do them so that the public starts embracing that that's the way it can be done and done successfully. I won't be able, it won't work if I just do it. We all have to do it. I so, love that you, I, I love that that's how you framed it. I mean, what we do in mass collectively is what will be accepted. It's, it's the theory of uh, innovation of diffusion. It, it, there will be late adopters, but it's the early adopters who are going to drive the um, adoption rate. And so let's all do it together and be the educator when you're doing it. Don't just throw up virtual open house, but explain to people what that means. That's exactly what you're getting at. Here's another question. How long will you try or test something new before you change it in this shift? That is such a great question. Holy crumb. Um, I will tell you that my driver for anything I do is, is how much money I make out of it, right? So you, I can't even begin to tell you numbers and for at least three months, but you got to do something for three months and then see what comes from it after that. 
So it, it's important and you guys saw the list. I'm doing a lot of stuff. So most of those things are going back to what Andrew said. They're hardworking things. It's not spending a lot of money. It's spending a lot of my time and my effort. I will do those forever and ever and those will always work. And so I won't be spending money too quickly though. And none of this is costing me a ton of money. Those postcards, I sent out a postcard on Keller Offers, did well on my first one, but I'll be watching that income on phone calls the incoming phone calls very closely because those are super expensive and I'll only do those probably one more time and see. So that's a one month of postcards sent twice. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. that answers your question. It isn't super clear, but you really, you can't stop doing anything for a long time. You have to get those numbers and the discipline and then the numbers come from the discipline later and only if it's at least a five times should you keep it around. I love that. And here's, a, here's one more piece of advice that I find a lot of realtors forget. It doesn't matter how long you test something if you do not have some period of time blocked into your calendar so that you can observe the results of that. Yes. So many people will try something and then just theoretically believe what they want to believe about whether or not it worked instead of actually looking at the data. So if it's one month, if it's three months, then sit down and take a hard look at it. Um, last call for questions here. The person said, great answer, Cody. Yeah. Perfect. Um, All right. I don't see anything else. Cody, thank you so much for taking some of your valuable time. Get back to uh, lead generating and no have an amazing day. I'll talk to you and see you soon. Okay. Thank you, David. And thanks all for I listening. Wanna thank you so much for joining us for this portion of this training, your real estate blueprint for the market of the moment. No matter where you are in your business, I hope that you were able to take at least one piece of information that you are going to go and implement right now. Hey, if you find yourself in the greater Phoenix and Scottsdale metro and you need more specific information and business consultation, I'd love nothing more than to serve you by uh, talking with you about your business. Hey, we are in this together because I know when we help one another, we all grow and we all get through this together. So, hey, if you gain value from this, I would love nothing more than for you to hit the subscribe button down there, turn on notifications, hit that little bell, and stay with us as we continue to share valuable insights about thriving in the market of the moment.